This week's blog post is the fifth in my series on a visit to the Wadsworth Athenaeum. The introduction to the series is on dianedrantywriter.com and there are also links to all the previous posts in the series. This week we are looking at Hudson River School paintings and related American works that date to the period of the Civil War. Chronologically, this sculpture is out of order because it wasn't done until 1909, but it sets the context for many of the paintings in this post. Daniel Chester French was commissioned to create a monumental figure of Lincoln for the town of Lincoln, Nebraska. The Wadsworth reduced size copy stands in a gallery with paintings that date to the Civil War era. The sculpture by French has significant differences from the one by St. Gaudens, sculpted in 1887 for Lincoln Park in Chicago. That one was the first to show the president gaunt with his head bowed in thought. French used the research for this sculpture as the basis for his seated Lincoln in the Lincoln Memorial, Washington, D.C., which has much the same mood. This one is by Sanford Robinson Gifford. It's called The Passing Storm and the Adirondacks, painted 1866. And I've given you the frame as well. If you look at this, you can see the the colors are somewhat better on the one at the upper left, but the sky is blown out. It's too bright there. Uh, on the other hand, in the one that has the frame, I think the colors are far too yellow because I did not adjust my camera. Gifford studied art in New York City in the mid-1840s, and by the 1850s he was a well-known member of the Hudson River School. He painted in the luminist style with glowing light and precise detail. Gifford traveled widely in Europe, Egypt, and the Rocky Mountains. He died in his late 50s of malarial fever. This one, this is rather lovely and rather large as well, is by Frederick Edwin Church. It's called The Vale of St. Thomas, Jamaica, 1867. Church, as I've said before, was one of the leading painters of the Hudson River School, and he did spectacular panoramic landscapes accurate to the smallest botanical detail which he executed in his studio based on sketches done on site. Church and his wife spent several months in Jamaica after losing two young children to diphtheria. The half-light, half-dark scene here perhaps reflects his personal loss as well as the trauma of the Civil War and the assassination of President Lincoln just a couple years earlier. This very peculiar object is the 19th century equivalent of scrapbooking. They would take a, an object like a table and cover it with small objects of personal significance. This memorial was created by Eliza Trask, 1834 to 1919, and it was based on a candle stand on which she put a wooden pyramid to which she glued seashells and photos of herself and her husband Adoniram in his Union Army uniform. Adoniram survived the Civil War, so the piece includes images of the couple growing old. For another example of memory wear, I've given you a link to one at the Bennington Museum. This painting is Gremlins in the Studio. It's by Martin Johnson Heed, done around 1865 to 75. As I said last week, Heed is one of the luminists who began as a subset of the Hudson River painters. They predate the Impressionists, and although they were also entranced with light, the luminists, unlike the Impressionists, are meticulous about representing details. If you like this sort of glow, I've given you a link to more of Heed's paintings. And this week's recommendations includes one of them as the illustration for the poem, The Harbor of Dreams. One of Heed's favorite subjects was meadows and marshes. He painted dozens of canvases with those subjects. But this painting is unusual. He's used photographically accurate detail, which is called trompe l'oeil, fool the eye, to make us think that a gremlin has snuck into his studio to yank at the canvas that he's painting so that marsh water is spilling onto the studio floor. Uh, the quality of this picture isn't good enough, but there actually is a little gremlin here. And finally, Eastman Johnson's The Confab, 1877. After the Civil War, many Americans longed for the good old days of innocent rural youth. Johnson, 1824 to 1906, is famous for charming genre scenes such as this one, just scenes of everyday life. Next week, we'll, we will do a few more 
post-Civil War paintings. DianeDurantyWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, and my many other obsessions. To join the free Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDurantyWriter.com. Thank you as always for listening.